Our reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I can remember sitting in Mrs. Klazura's fourth grade class at Henry P. Filer Elementary School in Maryville, Indiana, and learning how to write a story, say, an informational story for the newspaper. When you're writing a story to inform people, you have to answer the five W's, right? Who, what, when, where, why. If you can answer those questions well, you can write intelligently most of the time, and readers will come away with more information than they had before. It's important, if you are a journalist, that you understand the basics about your subject and convey them well and truthfully. And it's important, if we are the body of Christ, that we can answer some basic W questions too. If, as a church, we want to impact our community and share the gospel with our neighbors, it's important for us to understand who Jesus is and what he did, who we are and what we are called to do, and why this is important, why it matters. When we get to the scripture today, we are now in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus is teaching his students, the disciples that he seated on the mountain with then, and us, gathered here in this church now, about some of these W's. He's sharing some information with us disciples so we can kind of catch up to what's going on. And so on your outline today, I've focused on three things, three W's, that Jesus is teaching the disciples about this calling that they have. Now the first W is what. Jesus asks his disciples to know what they are called to be. Point number one, know what you are called to be. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus tells his disciples. Now I know a lot of us, many of us, are trying to watch our salt intake. But in the disciples' day, before the modern world of processed foods filled with additives and preservatives, salt was valuable and desired. In the Hebrew scriptures, salt represents God's covenant. Covenants between God and the Levite priests, between God and King David, are described as salt covenants. Additionally, every offering to God was to be sprinkled with salt. Today, on the Shabbat table, the Jewish Sabbath table, challah is always sprinkled with salt to signify this. So in hearing about salt, Jesus' Jewish disciples would have also had that as part of their understanding. Jesus was referring to their covenant relationship with God. They are salt, and they are to offer good flavor of God with every word and every action. You are the salt, says Jesus. Stay flavorful. If you don't, 
you become useless, may as well be thrown out. What about us? How are we salty? How do we live as salt of the earth? We add flavor that's unique and compelling. We draw out the goodness of God's flavor wherever we go. We offer our actions and our voice as though we are offering it to God. How much better would the world, a community, or a neighborhood be if the church is living as though all of this is true, not losing their flavor, but growing more flavorful? Verse 14, you are the light of the world, says Jesus. Light has a very important function in our world. Without it, we are in darkness. You are like a city on a hill, says Jesus. When someone is traversing a dark wilderness and can see bright lights of a city ahead of them, they can keep walking toward the light. They gain direction from the lights ahead. You wouldn't put a lamp under a large basket, says Jesus. That renders the light useless. Why have a lamp if you're going to cover it up? But again, in the Hebrew scriptures, light has meaning. Just as salt represents covenant, light represents vocation. We've been reading some of the scripture passages in recent weeks, some of the ones that describe being light as the nation of Israel's vocation. And so it might sound familiar. Isaiah 49, for example, we read that a few weeks ago. God says, It's too little a thing, nation of Israel, that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Or how about Isaiah 58, which we heard this morning. God says when his people finally understand what he's calling them to do, when we finally realize that he's calling us to seek justice for the littlest and the least, the hungriest and the poorest, when we finally understand that this is the fast he chooses, then light will shine in the darkness and God's people will raise up foundations of many generations and be called the repairer of the breach between God's people and the world. The nation of Israel, God's covenant people, already had an understanding that they were light. Jesus reaffirms that, reminds them and us of their vocation as the covenant people of God. Let your light shine. It's time to be the light of the world. As God's covenant people, today it's still important that we understand our calling to be light, to reflect the light of God. How? Jesus lays that out too. We shine God's light when we do good works, that impact other people. Let your light shine before others so they see your good works, said Jesus. We don't hide away under this bushel basket of a church building, enjoying God's light between one another. As a church, we don't keep the light trapped. We shine out so that it can provide direction and light for our neighbors. We participate in ministry that cares for others. We support ongoing mission and organizations that are amplifying God's light. We love our neighborhood schools and students. We equip disciples so they can share and be good news and a bright light for their own friends, coworkers, neighbors, and strangers they encounter. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. So now we know what we are called to be according to Jesus. Jesus has given us some metaphors rooted deeply in our faith to help us know what. The second W is who. Know who you are following. Know who you are following. This will be very important for the disciples gathered with Jesus on the mountain. The covenant God made with Israel, the vocational call to be light for the nation, still matters for a very important reason. Verse 17, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill them. 
I mean, Jesus' identity, it's a little bit of a mystery at this point, right? This in Matthew, it's his first sermon on record to his new disciples. I can't ask Peter and John what they were thinking directly, but it seems that they would have understood that Jesus is doing something very different. But how different? Who is this Messiah? Someone connected to the God of Israel? Or someone doing a whole new thing? After all, the disciples are Jews living in Roman-occupied land. It has been a very long time since the law was given and the prophets had spoken. 400 years since the last prophet. That's maybe 25 or 30 generations. Maybe God had forgotten them. Maybe God was leaving the old behind and doing something completely new. Were they really supposed to keep living with the law? Were the promises that God made through the prophets still valid? Jesus says to his disciples, I've not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. Verse 18, truly I tell you, unless heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. God hasn't made a mistake. He hasn't changed the plan, not even one iota. The law and the prophets still stand in entirety. His Messiah is not an anti-Moses, anti-law figure. Rather, the Messiah is the God of the law in flesh. And what does Jesus' identity as such have to do with his disciples? It turns out his identity determines their identity. Verse 19, Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus does not nullify the law, but fulfills it, the disciples are still to follow the law and they are to teach it. They are to live righteous lives that abide by the commandments, and they are to make sure that these commandments continue to be transmitted to future generations. Why? As a matter of fact, that's point number three. Understand why this is important. Understand why this is important. Why is Jesus calling the disciples salt and light? Why is Jesus clarifying his identity as the fulfillment of the law and prophets? Because his disciples can expand God's kingdom by living righteous lives that compel others to glorify God and become citizens of his kingdom too. That's a really big why. Because they can expand God's kingdom by living righteous lives that compel others to glorify God and become citizens of his kingdom too. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus says. He doesn't say, you're the salt of the synagogue. He doesn't say, you are the salt of your faith community. You are the salt of the earth. Your flavor is not to be kept in the safe, comfortable, familiar places. You're supposed to sprinkle that around in places that need some flavoring. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others, Jesus says. Why? Verse 16, so they can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Light-filled actions can glorify God, not just in the actions themselves, but because others see God reflected in those actions or deeds. Why follow the commandments? Why teach others about them? Just because it makes God happy? No. Because it matters in the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom grows by each person who hears the good news and becomes disciples who are also salt and light and students of the Messiah who fulfills the law and the prophets. Because the strength of the kingdom is found in the obedience and willingness of the disciples. And as modern-day disciples, we share in this call to be salt and light, 
to live lives that honor the God who has made us members of his covenant family and citizens of his kingdom, so that others may be called to live in kingdom-building ways, too. Sometimes I wonder how Jesus' disciples understood his teaching on the mountain. Right? He, Jesus was not a journalist conveying basic information. Jesus was a teacher, a rabbi, speaking to his students, shaping them, preparing them, equipping them for the work ahead. And most of Jesus' disciples gave their whole lives to the work of the kingdom of God. They came to know who Jesus is, what he called them to be, and why it mattered enough to carry on the mission and ministry with the help of the Holy Spirit after Jesus had been crucified, raised, and returned to heaven. We are students of Jesus called to do the same. May we discover a bit more every day about our vocation so that we can understand how God calls each of us to be salt and light. May we find our identity in the one who fulfills the law and the prophets by living faithful lives. And may our lives compel and teach others to do the same. Jesus, continue to teach us each day as we answer your calling and seek greatness for your glory and kingdom. Amen. Our hymn in your blue hymnals is number 322, 322, Spirit of the Living God. We'll sing it through twice. <laughs> 